by a visit yesterday. I just bit your tongue. Oh no. I'm not sure how I feel personally about a female dom. The trope in itself, it's nice, it's good, but when it has that twist, sign me the up. So I'm initiating emergency protocols. Good morning, it is quite early on Monday morning, it is 8.30 a.m. But I have quite a bit to do this week, so I'm excited to get the week off to a productive start. Good morning, my darling. I know we do normally have snuggles while I drink my coffee. We don't normally just get up and do something work related. But mommy just needs to get this done and then we can snuggle. We can snuggle for 20 minutes, I promise. So we just got back from Glasgow yesterday, so I've had a little bit of a mini holiday, a city break, and I'm actually feeling quite refreshed. So the plan for today is to pack all of the orders that were placed in last week's restock, which there aren't too many, which I'm thankful for as I'm playing catch up after having Thursday and Friday off, but a couple of them are quite large. And then after that, I have to go to my dad's because I accidentally got a ASOS parcel delivered to him that has stuff in it for mine and Curtis's anniversary, which is tomorrow. And he has also ordered some coasters and like personalized key rings from Curtis for his friend's birthday. So I have to go and drop those off. Essentially we're each holding things hostage and we need to make the change. So I'm gonna have to go do that this afternoon, which I could do with the extra work time, but sadly it can't be avoided. I just didn't have time to go and get them last week. So that's pretty much going to be my day. I'm actually, after my break, I'm really excited to pack orders which is wild speaking of candles actually if you are looking to get your hands on any i'm currently doing a massive restock every week from like a couple of weeks ago i've already done two up until i think is it like the second or fourth of december that's the friday it's always friday at 7 p.m with the exception of last week because i was going away and after the final restock i will be leaving the shop open until i think it's the like 11th or 12th that's going to be my last day i'm going to make it like a monday so if anything any orders are placed over the weekend like i can finish them up on Monday and then I'm done until February because we all know I don't work in January to compensate for how much extra I end up working in like November and December. So I know my candles are out of stock a lot of the time but because I am restocking so much at the moment now would be a good time to grab any if you've been thinking about it and also when I make my vlogs I don't often have enough time to give you guys advance warning of when things are going to drop. So consider this your advance warning that things are going to be dropping every Friday up until the second i'm sure it's the second of december in terms of reading this week i am going to be participating in the final 2022 round of the final book support group which is a readathon created by steph from steph loves that is pretty much just dedicated to reading sequels reading any book in a series really but especially sequels and if possible the last book in a series which is perfect for me and my goals for the rest of the year if you guys just saw the video which at the time of filming this has just gone up it'll be like a couple of weeks ago by the time you get this video but I went through all of the series in my spreadsheet like the series page of my spreadsheet and dnf like a whole bunch of them but I still do have quite a lot left and quite a few of those are also duologies where I only need to read one book so I can't promise how much I'm gonna get read this week because as well as like packing orders I have like a full restart to prepare for I have to film at least one video and edit at least two but I would also like to get quite a bit of reading done there's not necessarily any prompts for the final book support group readathon as well I do need to check if there is actually any um for this particular round but there doesn't need to be any really because the goal is just to finish series if possible and if not or if you're not feeling it and to make as much progress with sequels as you can so I'm continuing the book that I started last week which is The Deck of Omens by Christine Lynn Herman this one is the sequel to The Devouring Grey which is just a duology so this is the final book in the series I wasn't sure if I was doing final book support group this time but I saw the book that I'm currently reading and also what I plan on picking up next and thought you know what you might as well just make a week of it what are you doing if you put your clothes through this anymore I will end you. So The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman is a YA contemporary fantasy that's set in this small town in New York State and the main character or I suppose they're all equally main characters really but the catalyst of the story is that a teenage girl moves back to the town that her family is from and finds out that she's one of the founding families for the town and the founding families have a purpose which is to keep the beast in the 
Grey. The Grey is kind of like a parallel dimension, think like Stranger Things, and there is a beast that resides in it, and if the founding family don't keep the beast in check, then it occasionally escapes from the Grey and kills townspeople. So it's very like Vampire Diaries meets Stranger Things. This one has a little bit of a different plot line. It is still concerning the beast in the Grey, but there is a sickness that is seeping from the Grey and turning the town. I guess kind of poisonous there's like spores and roots that are making the townspeople ill and putting them into this like kind of catatonic state and the founding families are trying to figure out a way obviously to stop it and save the town so the thing that i did enjoy most about the first book was the atmosphere i think christine lynn herman is really good at like a, a creepy um kind of like spooky small town vibe and i do think that it was really good at like giving this like i said vampire diaries meets stranger things kind of vibe that christine lynn herman was going for and it isn't necessarily what i would describe as like a fun read but it was definitely like a good time it's pretty fast paced it's easy to read and the atmosphere is what really like carried me through it with the deck of omens i would say that i'm not enjoying it quite as much i'm not sure whether it's because it's been a while since i read the devouring gray like it's been a couple of years although i am still following it like pretty well or it could also be because i've read all of us villains by christine lynn herman and amanda foodie since i've read the devouring gray which i do think is a little bit better a little bit better written um it is new adult that one as well and it does the spoon small town atmosphere even better than this does so I feel like I was remembering the Devouring Grey as being on par with all of us villains whereas all of us villains is just like a tiny bit better but regardless I am enjoying it if nothing else it's a nice easy read that I'm sinking into quite quickly and I'm able to just kind of like turn pages which is something that I have been struggling with a little bit especially when it gets to this time of year I think last Monday and Tuesday I worked till 10 o'clock at night and then last night as soon as we got back from Glasgow go um i worked for two hours so it's good at a time like this when i'm busy to have something that's like quite easy to fall into because i don't want to be when i have limited time to read i don't want to be spending that time struggling with focus so hopefully because it is a quick read i'm 146 pages into it it'll only take me a couple of days to get through and then i don't know we'll see what's on the cards for me after that i'm starting to think that I do things way too differently to take this seriously midnight behind me but i swear it is not even 5 p.m yet i have a couple of things to haul for you guys today one of which is a complete mystery i did go and get my nails done today the brief was wintry a little bit christmasy but not balls to the walls christmas you know because i love christmas as much as the next gal but only on december 1st through until whatever day decoration down day is is it like the 6th of january i forget every single year but yeah i wanted to get a little bit in the festive mood because it's an awkward time you know it's the 22nd of november so it's like eight days before the festive period starts for me personally so i didn't want to not get christmas nails but like it's just a little bit too early for me right in this minute so we went for like kind of a compromise on that as well as that today is also mine and curtis's anniversary so he did obviously bestow a couple of gifts upon me which i would like to show you guys the first one is of course a book and it is fire and blood by george rr R. martin which you would think that i would already have this but when catch up book club like way way back when did got along which was it was in 2018 because it was in preparation for the final season which was obviously a big disappointment and then nobody wanted to continue and it was terrible but i did fully intend to read this at that time along with like the tales of is it duncan egg but i just the thing that was putting me off this was that it is like a targaryen textbook it's a history of the targaryens written kind of like a textbook which doesn't sound especially riveting but now that i've seen from the show that it is especially riveting i kind of have a renewed interest in this book now george rr R. martin to me is already quite dry it's not the driest thing i've read but he's not <laughs> much of a man for like compelling prose you know what i'm saying it's quite slow paced and like the 
magic within his work is within the intricacy and complexity of the plot not how riveting the actual writing itself is so with this then being like a textbook I'm not sure how I want to read this, whether I want to dip in and out of it, whether I want to set myself like a small page goal a day or like a chapter a day, however big the chapters may be, I actually have no idea. But it is something that I would like to, okay, so the chapters are like anything between like 10 and 20 pages. Oh, and that one's like, that one's 56 pages. So I'm not sure how I would like to progress with this. If you guys in the comments have read this, which I know a lot of you guys will have done, let me know whether you think I should read it like a book, like a story, or whether I can read it like a textbook. So like the chapters in here are sectioned as like Reign of the Dragon, The Wars of King Aegon the First. Three Heads Had the Dragon, Governance Under King Aegon the First. So it is like a textbook. Um, Should I read it as such? Let me know. The non-bookish things that he got me <laughs> i have another buffy t-shirt this is my fourth one um and this one is the urban outfit as one which i did ask him to get because it is it overpriced it's overpriced in the way that everything in urban outfitters is overpriced but it is a distressed looking one it's a unisex one as well so i imagine it's going to be slightly too big for me it looks very very large but this one is the urban outfitters one and i have this one alongside the asda one or one of the asda ones i also have the amazon one which i think is my favorite and the boohoo one which am i wearing one today oh my god i am it's boohoo we're wearing boohoo today which is my least favorite of the four because i'm not sure how i feel about the blue on gray your girl is obsessed i'm actually offended because on the label here it says buffy halloween and buffy i've said it before and i'll say it again buffy is a lifestyle not a seasonal thing hello you are a lifestyle as well my bunny bun yes say hello say hello stop kissing get down please you're scratching i need to cut her dew claws but i'm terrified and i actually want to take her to my dad so that my dad can do it but um i had to do a flyby visit yesterday i just bit your tongue i did i'm surprised that didn't hurt you yeah i had to do a flyby visit yesterday so i didn't want to take her because we're still having some issues with travel sickness and it just wasn't worth it for the length of time i was actually going to spend at my dad's this one we picked up in glasgow at the weekend and i was there like i picked it up and was going to get it myself and curtis said like i will get this for you and i don't know why it was made but it is the lush stranger things bath bomb set so it's just two bath bombs inspired by stranger things but they're pretty cool you guys know i love me a lush bath bomb i love stranger things and they also come with a couple of cards wait a minute these are collectible cards aren't they no they're not right they're just telling me what the bath bombs are right these aren't collectible i don't need to go and buy a ton of these boxes right please tell me that i don't <laughs> no okay they're supposed to look like collectible cards but it is just telling me about the bath bombs these are really cool though i like them and in the box we have the two bath bombs this one is the rift i'm gonna have to take them out aren't i this one is the rift oh god these are going everywhere and then this one is a d8 they smell real good oh the rift has the crackling things in them that are kind of like popping candy but like a bath bomb version and the d8 actually dissolves into two colors it's supposed to be like two different parts so thank you very much to curtis for the gifts i know that you will never watch this vlog but i mean if you do thanks it's been seven years guys can you believe it when i started my channel it was two and now we're up to seven it's been a long old time both for curtis and my channel and then i just have one more thing that's come in a massive box but it's actually really light and it is a gift from obviously you know who it's a gift from it's from ash as always this i do not know what it is it doesn't feel like it's even heavy enough to be a book and like i said it weighs absolutely nothing considering the size of the box here's the gift note love you but not pet her oh no it's a pet did you send me a lid roller ash did you send me a lid roller oh oh my god it's one of these ones where everything kind of gets caught in there and you can clear it out this is going to be amazing oh and it has like a face on it that's why the note says chomp chomp so this is a gift from love you but not pet her ash and this is actually something that was really upsetting me as well it says just watched ali's video about being burnt out of booktube made me sad thinking about youtube without you you have so many that adore you small thank you a chomp chomp we love it and you from love you but not pet her ash <laughs> So Ali from Hardbot Corda actually just posted a video that I watched last night that actually was very upsetting to me, but also rang true. I will link it 
so the down in the description box so that you guys can go and watch it if you so choose but it is essentially just about Ali's experience with burnout on booktube and how she thinks that it's a massive problem that booktube is one of the most intensive content creation things that you can do I guess because the back end is so heavy with how much you have to read to be able to create content and then because the content in itself is long form um you have to kind of put more in just because it's longer you know so there's there's more there so you have to do more in the content end as well as the back end whereas like if you go for the bookstagram route like yes bookstagram is leaning more towards video now but typically it's a picture format so it's just even though you still have to read all of the books then the content creation element is easier whereas booktube you kind of have both where it's a heavy content creation load and also a heavy back end like reading load and it was also about like booktube trends and how they're changing so quickly how there's so many of them but some of them are like super intensive vlog projects that are unrealistic for the average content creator to kind of replicate or keep up with and I get it I get it all and I felt it especially this year and I feel like I'm going to make some sort of 2023 goals video where I talk about how I've had this kind of like personality crisis during 2023 where due to mental health I haven't been able to keep up with what I was keeping up with and that mental health thing the thing that broke me was unrelated to booktube completely but it has affected my channel in that I just can't keep up with who I was because essentially I am experiencing burnout I actually in my last therapy session the conclusion that my therapist and myself kind of came to and like where the session went was discussing how I have burnout and that I don't prioritize myself I prioritize my work and there are many underlying reasons for that but like booktube in itself it, it does facilitate burnout it's a lot of work I just feel like you can never keep up there's so many different things you can do like do you want to follow the trends do you want to just carry on making the content that you're making do you want to focus on vlogs do you want to do like big secret vlogs that may take three weeks or do you want to do a weekly reading vlog it's just so much it's a lot and I definitely understood where Ali was coming from but it was very very sad to me because I would not have a channel if it wasn't for Ali Ali was like the second booktube channel that I ever found Ali was the biggest source of inspiration to me Ali was the reason why I did actually create my channel so that video was like really upsetting to me on on two fronts one because it's just upsetting generally to see Ali struggle with all of these things and then also because everything she said was absolutely true and I felt it as well and I feel like that has been a big contributing factor because I've been putting all of my attention on like your mental health has been bad so you're not reading as much which means you can't do as much like because your mental health has been bad you're a little bit more fragile so you can't put yourself under the pressure to do these themed reading vlogs that you were trying to put yourself under the pressure of before and it just never works out for me because I want to do weekly vlogging and I feel like themed vlogs are taking too long and when I feel like they're taking too long then I don't want to do them anymore because I'm feeling the pressure of having them done which takes the enjoyment out of them so watching that video kind of clarified some things for me where I was like yes my mental health has been bad yes I'm a little bit more fragile so I can't put myself under the pressure that I did before but I'm also burnt the fuck out because I work a lot and I've put so much of myself into my channel and I still continue to do so and I will always continue to do so but I feel like this year has been a learning curve for me the way that I just can't do bookopoly anymore I can't make myself read those books and all of this kind of stuff is just contributed to yes I am burnt out I'm not giving up on my channel not going to change my schedule if anything I've been thinking of ways I could go back up to a three video a week schedule and I have lots of ideas for my channel it's just about kind of like making things work for me because realistically at the end of the day I was never somebody who could read five books in a week I was never somebody who could read 20 books in a month and trying to be that person when that person is not me it's not in my skill set was never ever gonna work for me and it hasn't worked for me and it's resulted in me pushing myself too hard and <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this close-up of Hamilton while I talk and resulted in ultimately me getting to the point where I kind of have to reevaluate what we're doing here and figure out what it is that I enjoy doing what it is is that I, I do well and pushing myself into that direction instead of fitting myself into a box that I think I should fit into and as well as that I think I've really found my own footing 
over this year and over this year as well I feel like I've also been finding myself both like within myself um, and also within content creation because I've taken a lot of time to reflect I've had to because I've been really struggling this year and I feel like going forward you're gonna see a lot more authenticity for me I've reevaluated the things that are important to me and this platform is still remains to be one of the most important things in my life so you can guarantee that none of that is going to change but I've just had to kind of I need to take a step back and I need to think about what I want to do what I do well maybe experiment with a couple of things and take my channel in that direction with more authenticity not that this has been lacking authenticity I just feel like it's been a little bit of me trying something and then like manically hopping between things and trying things instead of taking a step back to observe and finding the things that I really enjoy and I'm really good at and pursuing that my channel has never lacked authenticity in my opinion anyway it's one of the things that is most important to me trust authenticity but I do feel like I lost myself over the last couple of years and that resulted in in burnout like I got to a point where I was just fucked this is really interesting actually because this is not something that I actually plan to bring into this vlog but it is something that I had a lot of thoughts about when I watched Ali's video so Ash has spurred a conversation and you guys who watch my vlogs you guys are the real ones and I know that you guys are the real ones and my patrons are also the real ones so thank you for sticking with me just generally it's been a rough ride and yeah thank you very much Ash for um for the chomp chomp. Nothing. So this is good. Yeah. Now we're gonna run the one of her. For her 24 seven, just hoping that they'd be able to get her home for Christmas. Because remember, at this point, and tie a little yellow ribbon around their mailbox if they had searched it, like nothing had come up. Which was like a touching, but haunting reminder that she was still out there, yeah. ready to be found. I hope she's been able to like, talk to someone, get some kind of counseling. Like, therapist about it, a psychiatrist about it, just to get it out. Just get it out. Because that shit will live in your yeah, system. Yeah, I just don't want her to have to have that. That's it. That's like a whole different kind of trauma. Now, he received two consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. Adventurous, fun. They are what I want when I pick up a young adult fantasy story. And on top of that, the main character in this is somebody who struggles with extreme anxiety, both in questioning herself questioning how she fits in, but also just social things. People who think their problems are so huge craze me. Like this time I sort of ran over this girl on her bike. It was the most traumatizing event of my life and she's trying to make it about her leg. I've just finished filming my TBR but something else that I've finished is the Deck of Omens. I could have finished this a little bit sooner, I could have finished it last night but in my defense, not in my defense, more like in my attack, I found something new to be obsessed with. I typically have a planner like a paper planner, like a real fancy physical planner and sometimes I just feel like I'm too busy to plan and I don't have that 30 minutes in the morning to kind of organize my thoughts which after speaking with my therapist is something that we're mentioning my therapist a lot today or this week in this vlog it'll be one day for you but it's a long time for me but planning is kind of essential for me and organizing my thoughts and stopping me from feeling overwhelmed and sometimes I just feel like I'm too busy there's too much going on in a day I need to get a quick start and I can't spend that time planning so what that results in is me feeling guilty for not using and having like empty pages in this gorgeous planner that I have. So I'm trying something a little bit different for 2023 and I've just downloaded a digital planner that I got on Etsy. It was on sale so it was like £5.50. I will link it in my description box if anybody is interested. There's like loads of different colour options that you get with this download. Also I have one for 2024 as well and it just has everything that you could ever possibly need so it has like your monthly overlay spread it has a monthly overview so you can reflect on the month it has four different versions of like a weekly page it has the typical daily planning pages that I enjoy where it's like broken down by hour because time blocking for me um, helps a lot with my productivity and it has a whole ton of extra stuff like fitness and nutrition trackers period anxiety and depression trackers goal planners 
project planning pages, um, trip planning pages, recipe cards, anything you could possibly need. It has so much more than I will ever utilize in it, but it's not difficult. Cause if I printed this out, it'd be like a thousand pages, but because it's digital and everything's hyperlinked, it's just really easy to overlook the things that I don't need to use. And obviously there's no guilt if I don't write in a digital planning page, you know, cause I can't see the pages unless I click on those specific pages. So I was just filling it in and having a grand old time sorting out my January schedule, just on the monthly overview page and putting in all of my content, all of the Patreon stuff that I need to do. Cause I can have a family calendar to myself because I have, instead of people's names across the top, I have a section for personal, candles, YouTube and Patreon. And then I can organize everything that's going on across all four of those things throughout the month. <laughs> month. So this planner is absolutely not for everyone. If you are new to planning, wouldn't recommend getting something as intense as this. But if you're someone like me that has like lots of different avenues of things going on, honestly, it's great. And the way that it's organized and because I can write so much smaller on an iPad, I can fit everything in one monthly spread instead of having to have like four monthly spreads for four different things. And I had just such a good time. I want to continue. I want to make more plans so I can write them in my planner. But that meant that I was too busy doing that to finish the last like 40 pages of this so I did it this morning and I gave it three stars. I want to say that I didn't enjoy it as much as the Devouring Grey but I don't actually know whether that's true because when I filled in my spreadsheet I have a page that has it doesn't have all of the books that I own on it it should but it doesn't but when I finish a book I can go and fill in like the star rating and also like tick off that I've read it and I actually gave the Devouring Grey three stars. I thought that I'd given it four so I enjoyed it I guess about the same as the Devouring Grey. I feel like I didn't enjoy it quite as much. The plot didn't grip me quite quite as much as the devouring graded but what i do feel is that you don't really have to read this because the devouring gray does a good job of like closing off the plot and this has like it's a continuation and a reaction of to the events of the first book but mm -hmm. Um, it has its own kind of plot arc. You're not really left on a cliffhanger at the end of book one, except for in terms of like relationships between characters and things like that. This falls into the category of YA that nobody would expect me to like, which is contemporary fantasy YA, things like The Ravens by Danielle Page and I cannot remember. There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins, which isn't fantasy, but it has like, it's, um, like a slasher but that kind of like spooky season YA set in our world with a little bit of something I absolutely love and you'd really expect me to be into like high fantasy YA because I'm into high fantasy everything else but high fantasy YA is just such a miss for me recently whereas things like this really do it for me I, I can't tell you why it might have something to do with TV shows that I enjoy because I watched Riverdale for a long time I'm currently obsessed with Euphoria and it's just a palate cleanser like when I watch TV when I watch shows like Euphoria I kind of just want to be entertained and like astounded by how dramatic and unrealistic everything is so I feel like I get that kind of um like low energy entertainment which isn't a bad thing because that kind of I feel like that sounds like it's a bad thing but it's not like just something that's fun that entertains me without being the thing that other people think it's fun where, where to me it's like overly cheesy, unbelievable, um, over the top. I prefer something like this as my kind of fun, I guess. So I gave this three stars and this was also a gift from Linda. So thank you very much to Linda for gifting this to me. It took me a long time to get around to it, but I had a really good time. That's my first final book support group book down. I am also still participating in the Clear Your Shit Readathon, which I feel like keep neglecting to mention, but I will put the graphic that I have on my iPad here, which shows like where I'm currently up to with the readathon. I am progressing very casually, which is how I tend to participate in Clear Your Shit, because when it comes to November and December, I feel like I just have too much on to function properly mentally and remember to keep updating you guys that <laughs> I am actually participating in a readathon. I love this readathon as well. So um, next up I'm going to be starting a book that I'm not sure I'm going to finish this week because it is actually my one of my Patreon 24 hour readathons this weekend. The readathons are bi-monthly for everybody but then if you're in the top two tiers there's another bi-monthly one which means that you have access to a 24 hour readathon monthly if that makes sense. If you're in the lowest tier the 13 you have a bi-monthly readathon. Any other tier there's a readathon every month and it is the one that is exclusively for the top two tiers this weekend and the book that I'm about to start is not going to fit for the prompt for the readathon. She's generated by 
the Bookopoly board. There's like one Bookopoly prompt per readathon. But I do really want to start it as it is a sequel. So it fits. It's not the final book in a series, unfortunately, but it is a sequel. It's book two. And it is also the Alpha Ho Book Club book for November. The Alpha Ho Book Club being my Patreon fantasy romance book club. Very much like Catch Up Book Club, but with fantasy romance instead of epic fantasy. And we are currently making our way through the Four Horsemen series by Laura Thalassa. So it's a series of post-apocalyptic fantasy romance, each one following one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse as they come to earth one by one to bring about the end of days. Each one falls in love with a human woman who I'm assuming convinces them somehow to stop trying to destroy the earth. I really enjoyed Pestilence. Pestilence is a book that you would generally describe as fun, whereas I agreed it was really fun. Like it doesn't make a whole ton of sense. My whole thing with this series, which I think is gonna be consistent like the same with this one, is the even though these men, these horsemen are changing, it doesn't erase the fact that they killed thousands of people and they can't undo what they've done. Maybe death can, because he controls death. But these three, like pestilence, war and famine, can't unkill the people they've killed, which I feel like is as a line that I would struggle to cross to forgive. So there's unbelievable stuff like that. But then you're going into a, a series about the four horsemen of the apocalypse, you know that they're, they're gonna be bad. They're gonna do the slaughter and that's what they're here to do. So I feel like you do have to kind of get behind and overlook that a little bit because you couldn't have this series without those elements. And going into it, knowing that, I enjoyed it. It was a good time. It, like I said, unrealistic elements, which I normally complain about, but I really did enjoy Pestilence. And I've heard that Pestilence is the baby of the group and that it just gets more intense and better from here. So I'm really excited to read War. And I think the general consensus with everybody who's picked this up so far is that they are enjoying it a little bit more than Pestilence. So I am gonna be making a spoiler video for this as well, which is the perk, the interactive element that I provide, I guess, for the Alpha Hole Book Club is a book diary. So I will be working on a spoiler video for this as I go through it, but I will obviously, of course, be updating you as we go as well. Hopefully I have two days before the 24 hour readathon. So how many, this is the biggest in the series. Oof, not quite 500. Yeah, I'd have to read 240 pages a day to get through this before the readathon starts, which I don't think is gonna happen. But um, I do think I can make like a good dent in it. So I am right in the middle of making candles for tonight's restock. I only have a few left to go because I did the bulk of them the other day. But I need to select a book for tomorrow's Patreon card drain in a circle 24 hour readathon that I mentioned to you guys yesterday because we have a spanner thrown in the works here. War will not fit for the prompt because the prompt that we have for the readathon this month is queer books and war is very much like hetero as far as I'm aware. And then on top of that, I'm also doing final book support group. So I dug through my shelves, looked through my spreadsheet to try and find as many queer sequels as possible. Or it took me a while just to find one. And then when I did, I did get a couple more. The deck of omens is queer as well. So that would have counted. But I have four here and I'm not sure which one I want to go with. All of them would be good choices. Three of them would finish a series. One of them is the fifth book in a series. So I'm going to put it to a poll on Patreon, but I'm going to do it as all emojis because I feel like there's, there's obviously like a poll in a lot of ways is a popularity contest and I want things to be a little bit more obscure, but I thought I would run through the options with you guys here. The first one we have is The Sea Witch by Katie Robert. This one is the fifth book in the Wicked Villain series and the relationship in here, I believe, is a thruple. I think it's Ursula, Eric and Ariel. One that I'm really excited to read. Probably the most hyped to read but this is more of a series of standalones like with Wicked Villains so it's not a big like it's not a priority in terms of continuing series but that is The Galaxy in the Ground Within by Becky Chambers. I don't 100% know that this one is queer but every other book in this series has been so I feel like I'm making a very educated guess but this one is a series of sci-fi books that all have a self-contained plot. All follow slightly different characters with some cameos and like relevance to each of the other books. And they deal with a lot of contemporary issues in like a futuristic sci-fi setting. And then the next two, are actually like concluding series and would make me feel really accomplished if I did pick up either of these. But I think in terms of a 24 hour readathon, they're gonna be the hardest for me to actually complete. The first one is Holy Sister by Mark Lawrence. This one is the final book in the Book of the Ancestor series. This one is one of the shortest of my options, but it is also definitely going to be the most dense. And this one is Queer Assassin Nuns. I really like this series, although I think the first book is my favorite so far and I haven't heard the best things about the last one. And then the one that is definitely going to be a stretch just because of the length of it although 
it's YA so it's fast paced and the font is pretty large is Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. This one is the final currently published Grishaverse book. There is going to be a third Six of Crows book eventually I think but this one is the second book in the Nikolai duology which pretty much follows Nikolai, Zoya and Nina and Nina is a bisexual character so we're going to do all emojis. I'll show you what emojis I come up with here. I'll put a little screenshot of the poll before people start voting and then when we get to six seven o'clock tomorrow we'll see which one i'm actually going to be picking up hot messiness my readathon starts in 19 minutes and i forgot that i still had to come and like find out what book i'm actually going to be reading and i also would like to put my pajamas on and get cozy before we like officially start so let's have a little look at the poll i peeped it yesterday not long after it went live but i haven't really seen it since 172 votes and okay so holy sister really didn't do well which i actually kind of wanted to read that one i also was really feeling um the galaxy and the ground within but it seems <laughs> that the two leaders were rule of wolves and our winner is that's the wrong stack of books. The winner was Sea Witch by Katie Robert, which to be honest is the shortest, as I said yesterday, of them all. It's only 275 pages, so I probably will actually finish this in the 24 hours. Whereas if I started any of the others, it would have been, I feel, a little bit of a push. Also, I had a complete brain fart when I made this poll yesterday because I was just walking past my book cart as I was setting up to film this update. And I realized that I have both Miss Rule by Heather Walter and All of Our Demise by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman. This is a sapphic Rapunzel retelling. And this one, while I can't remember for sure if it is queer in any way, Christine Lynn Herman makes me believe that it will be because a lot of the characters in Deck of Omens are queer. So completely missed the opportunity to put those on the poll because they're actually, they're on my TBR cart because they're like high priority sequels for me. But we will be going with Sea Witch, I guess. So this one is the fifth book in the Wicked Villain series, which is a series of contemporary erotica stories that are also retellings of Disney movies, but where the villain is love interest as opposed to whoever the actual love interest is. Each book in this series is kind of a standalone but they do all interact with other characters from the series like as the books go along so it does kind of make sense to read them in order although you don't really technically have to. So this one is Ursula, Eric and Ariel I think and I'm pretty sure Ariel lives in a different area of the world. She was very briefly at the end of the beast I think and I can't remember what exactly like her part in the beast was. I do know 
that this is going to be a throuple between the three of them so there will be like a female female element in here. I haven't picked up a Wicked Villains book since last October when I tried to read the whole series in a week and I got burnt out real quick because while Katie Robert is one of my favourite erotica authors it's just a lot back to back to back with very little plot. Like there is some plot in here but it's mainly designed to be read for the sexy scenes. There is also BDSM in this series as well so do I think Katie Robert does have lists of kinks on the Goodreads pages but you just do be aware of that if you want to pick this series up. So I'm going to be kicking off with this one and I think if we roll a double I will be picking up a comic but I'll let you guys know for sure if that actually happens and I am quite a way into war. Sadly did not get it finished. I knew I wasn't going to get it finished by today but it would have been nice if I could have but I am 158 pages into it and I am enjoying it a lot because I'm a little bit pressed for time right now that's all I'm going to say about it but I think I'm actually going to extend this vlog by a couple of days just so that we can get war in here because I'm going to be moving on to the next installment of my Goldsboro vlog series after this one and I definitely want to get this done soon it is really really good I'm really into war as a character but I'll tell you more in a couple of days. I did actually go book shopping today. I wasn't supposed to. It was very last minute and I didn't take my camera with me or anything because we were gonna go to Asda. So for context I live in a small town with like a small Tesco and if we want a lot of things or if we want something in particular we tend to go to Big Asda which is like 35 minutes away and Waterstones is like 10-15 minutes away from that. So we went out with the idea of going to Tesco, we got to Tesco car park and we're kind of like, do you want to go to Big Asda instead? And while we were there, I very politely asked Curtis if he would be a dear and take me to Waterstones for one particular book because Waterstones have been running their Black Friday sale which is double points or triple points if you spend over £100 and that actually counts for pre-orders. So yesterday I ordered a couple of books for Christmas presents. I think I ordered one book for myself and then pre-ordered all three of Olivia Blake's books that are coming out next year and also TJ Clune's next book which is Is It In The Lives Of Puppets? And a few weeks ago I actually went to the Waterstones in Hull and and I saw the gorgeous Waterstones edition of Wolf Song. Now I wasn't super interested in this because when it comes to TJ Klune, I I know that he was known for writing like queer erotic fantasy romance, paranormal romance, before he wrote The House in the Cerulean Sea. And I was interested in the Cerulean Sea style book. So like that one, Under the Whispering Door and In the Lives of Puppets. But I wasn't really interested in any of his other stuff until I pre-ordered In the Lives of Puppets yesterday. And I realized that Waterstones are now doing all TJ Klune books with matching sprayed edges. So this was actually unavailable online. And when I went to Hull a couple of weeks ago, they had a table full of them and tons of them stacked up as well so I just desperately wanted to go and get one of these before they were like gone for good and they'd be really hard to find and if I don't love this book if I don't love the rest of the series it's not the end of the world and I don't foresee it actually being too difficult to get rid of when the edges look like this so yeah I just when I saw it a couple of weeks ago I convinced myself that I wouldn't regret it if I didn't buy it I found myself regretting it so I went back for it and now at least I can't regret not purchasing it and I got double points on it as well. And I can't tell you anything about this aside from that it's a queer fantasy. So I'm gonna go and get myself set up for my sprints. Really excited about this 24 hour readathon. Didn't get as much done today as I wanted to. I did clean the living room and the kitchen when we got back from town, but I actually wanted to do this room as well. So now I'm gonna have to do it tomorrow morning before my second set of sprints starts. But at least for the rest of this evening, I can settle down and get something right. It's the final sprint of the night and we've actually managed to make it through without any doubles, which is a blessing. But I am currently 110 pages into The Sea Witch and I'm enjoying it all right so far, especially considering that I haven't heard the best things about these final two books in the Wicked Villain series. So the names are different. It's Ursula, Eric and Ariel, but they're called Ursa Alaric and Zuriel. I'll just use their Disney names because it's easier and it'll help you guys understand it a bit more. Ariel lived a very sheltered life with her father, which we know is the same as the movie. And Eric actually has ended up in debt to Hades, so he's working it off in the club. And he's become friends with Ursula, who also has a bone to pick with Triton. So Ursula sends Eric to make Ariel fall in love with him, which he does. And I think that's part of like what happens in the beast. And then, Ariel wants 
Eric to be free from Hades. So she comes to Carver City and auctions off her virginity to pay off the debt that Eric owes. It's all kind of like consensual, the safe words, contracts, um, all of that kind of stuff is laid out at the beginning. But then obviously she finds out that Eric and Ursula were working together and the whole reason why they've orchestrated this thing is one, to get Eric's freedom, but also so that they can both get revenge on Ariel's father. The smut is pretty interesting. I don't think we've had a book in this series yet where the Dom is female. I think all of the Doms have been male and Malone, aka Maleficent, is going to be one of the main characters of the last book as well. So we will have a female Dom there as well, I think. Um, So that dynamic is proving to be interesting. I'm also loving the angst because now that Ariel has found out that Eric lied to her. The dynamic is really interesting and there's a lot of like angst there because he feels a lot of guilt and he hates that he feels guilt about what he's done to her and she was in love with him so she's kind of going along with this thing that's happening just because she was in love with him and is kind of ignoring the betrayal but like it hurts but she still wants him and she's trying to get through that and process it while this whole like arrangement's going on. So like I'm having a decent time. I wouldn't say it's my favorite in the series. I'm enjoying the dynamic between the three of them so far and the angst I didn't expect. And that's making me like it a little bit more. Good evening. So my readathon has just finished, but I actually meant to check in with you guys a couple of hours ago, but I got really distracted there towards the end of the readathon because you may have heard me say around that I'm going to New York next year. That is for my 30th. I turn 30 in May, my best friend turns 30 in June, but we don't have anything booked yet and we're aiming to go like in between our birthdays and with it being black friday there's some good black friday deals on prices for like new york holidays have gone up quite a bit recently over the last couple of months they've gone up like an average of two three hundred pounds per trip for like a, a week so i've been looking at black friday deals and i found one that's actually really decent so i'm a little bit hyped up i've been looking into the hotel also like possibly organizing the details seeing if we want to put down the deposit on this so i'm a little bit hyped up but a couple of hours ago, I did finish Sea Witch by Katie Robert and I did enjoy this one. I don't think it's my least favorite in the Wicked Villain series. I think that would still be the Hades, Meg and Hercules book. I nearly said Eric, but that's this one. But this was also a three star and the Hades one is the only other three star in this series to me. I think, I was gonna say it's the Thruple vibe, but it's not because the Beast is a thruple and that's one of my favorites in the series. I really like the dynamic in here between Zuriel and Alaric because they had this whole thing where like he'd betrayed her and she couldn't forgive him but she still loved him and that provided like a lot of angsty conversation but I didn't really gel with Ursula in here. I'm not sure how I feel personally about a female Dom as well. I'm With this being mainly erotica, personal preferences, I guess, do play a lot into how you rate these kinds of books. I don't know if a female Dom was to me. I didn't like how, I didn't, I just didn't feel the dynamic. Like the relationship just didn't make sense with Ursula in it for me. Like Ursa, and Alaric made sense. Alaric and Zuriel made sense, but it was the, it, it was, Ursa and Zoriel that just didn't make sense to me and it makes sense in context of it being a retelling of The Little Mermaid but in the narration of this I just wasn't I wasn't getting it and I wasn't feeling them as a thruple. This also has a lot of like pain and impact play in it so like spanking, flogging, caning, that kind of stuff which just really doesn't do it for me so that could definitely um play into my enjoyment of this one as well. So for sure not my favorite in the series, but I am glad that I've made some more progress in this series. I do just have Queen Takes Rose left now. And then when I eventually carry on with Katie Robert, I'll be moving on to, is it Sabine Valley or the Olympus series next? You'll have to let me know. I think it's Sabine Valley, but I also think that you might be able to go either way. Okay, I'm gonna 
morning guys progress in war is very slow at the minute i'm on page 178 i pretty much read nothing last night but that is because i worked until half eight i think i'm currently sat in the wreckage of all of the orders that i'm packing i think i have about 10 left but because we're coming up to christmas there's quite a lot of like large orders that i need to book in with couriers which takes me a little bit longer otherwise like they all would have been done yesterday so yeah i worked until half eight and then while i was really mentally tired i wasn't physically tired because i did nothing except sit here all day so i had a really good 30 minute spin ride followed by 20 minutes of weights just to burn off some restless energy but because i've noticed that if i work late i can't sleep like normally i'm in bed at half past 10 and i'm asleep before 11 these days because i get up at seven but if i work late like if i go back to work after dinner i can't sleep i was up until 1am last night not even doing anything just not being asleep so that's affected me this morning a little bit because of that like i didn't get much chance to read yesterday i'm hoping that tonight i will be able to get through a good chunk of this ideally if i read 160 pages today and 160 pages tomorrow because the most important thing to me right now is just that i get this done by the end of the month war i'm actually really enjoying it the guy in here is very much Carl Drogo and Carl Drogo in Game of Thrones never used to do it for me but I have since become very attached to Jason Momoa over the years and in hindsight Carl Drogo ain't all that bad. One of my patrons husbands actually said that the guy on the cover looks like if Carl Drogo and Jon Snow had a baby and literally <laughs> that is so accurate but this one is a little bit different to Pestilence and I really like the ways in which war and pestilence are different because what I'm discovering now is while pestilence is described as the baby of the group, he is a little bit of a brat. So this one starts off in Jerusalem and our main character Miriam makes weapons out of scrap and war is essentially bringing war to the world. So he rides into cities with his war band, decimates them, slaughters most of the people, recruits a bunch of people to his army, uh, pillages the town and then moves on. So he comes to Jerusalem to do just that. And the main character gets just snatched off the street by him and he sees her and he just calls her wife, picks her up, puts her on his horse and takes her back to the war camp. She obviously isn't vibing with this, but over time she's kind of getting to know war a little bit more. Content warnings in here for sexual assault, but not like like within the romance but the thing that I'm really enjoying about this <laughs> is War himself because when Pestilence is described as the baby I thought that he was going to be a sweetheart and everybody else was going to be like a little bit more vicious but War is actually like a nice guy like he's nicer than Pestilence only to the main character he's still riding his war band into cities and slaughtering people but um he's really nice to her he's really respectful to her I like the little bit of like arrogance he's got like because he keeps calling her wife even though she doesn't accept it she keeps expecting expecting him to make a move on her and he's just like no honey like I can wait till you're ready like you will come around I know that you are going to be my wife like you were chosen for me we are destined to be together and I know it's gonna happen and this also actually has one of my favorite tropes in it with a little bit of a twist so you know the romance trope where like the main character is sick and the love interest takes care of them okay that is a great trope in and of itself like it's good i enjoy it but i love it when the love interest is an asshole so the main character doesn't expect to be looked after it happens in the hating game it happens in this one and it's just it does it for me like the trope in itself it's nice it's good but when it has that twist sign me the fuck up i'm obsessed so war as a character is really doing it for me i'm really having a good time with this i'm actually still surprised how much i'm enjoying this series because like i said when i read pestilence surface level not really the kind of thing for me. Fourth Horseman of the Apocalypse. It, it's not really meant to be a happily ever after story from like the ingredients we have at the beginning but I do really like the the horsemen and like kind of the differences and the the way that pestilence and war are done very differently so far. Famine is supposed to be my favorite according to like people's predictions but I mean at the minute 
we can't top daddy well for me i'm having a great time with this one so it is going on for 2 p.m on the final day of the month and i still have not finished war so i'm initiating emergency protocols i'm doing emergency <laughs> sprints with my patrons to hopefully try and finish this book i'm gonna run them till five i not sure i'm gonna finish it because i am 292 pages in so i have like 193 pages left i think so i'm not sure i'm gonna finish them before five but i do want to get through like a decent chunk of this because my one kind of thing is that i want this done before the end of the month like i don't want to take this into december and oh my god can you believe that it is december tomorrow i should have blasted through a big chunk of this last night and i intended to that was the whole plan for last night but i ended up being really distracted because i was really really excited you may have seen on instagram and i also posted it on the community page of youtube a survey asking you guys about the potential for a group trip like do you want to travel with me potentially next year and i can confirm that that is going ahead that is launching this friday the day after this vlog goes live and i am so incredibly hyped incredibly excited but also a little bit terrified and astounded like why does anybody want to go anywhere with me you know what i'm saying like i'm just literally fucking nancy normal from northern england like what's the big deal i don't get it it is a really great opportunity though for you guys like if you're like a single traveler you don't have anybody to travel with and you want to go somewhere you want to travel more but you just don't have a travel buddy to so like explore with people with similar interests to you so that's like a really cool aspect of it but we're going to italy guys we're going to rome we're going to florence there's like um obviously the big sites the Colosseum, trevi fountain the Vatican. and there's also wine tasting um, like olive oil tasting a walking tour of Florence pasta cooking class and a whole bunch of like really cool stuff so the trip is actually going live tomorrow friday at 7 p.m and there will be a link in my description box i'm not going to go into too much detail about like what it is etc i imagine that i'll talk about it at some point in the future but there is a discount for the first eight people who do sign up to that um it's just like an early bird deal which makes the whole trip like 250 dollars cheaper if you're one of the first people to sign up to it so the link is in the description box if you guys are watching this like the day the that this vlog goes live there is an option on the trip page to get notified when it actually goes live at friday at seven so that you can book and also like all of the itinerary and everything is included on that page you get like all of your accommodation included all of the activities there's like six breakfasts three dinners two lunches or something like that and then i'm planning a couple of extra activities and also goodies to go with the trip as well so i was just really excited and really really hyped about that to the point where like i couldn't read because i spent two hours just finalizing the details being overly excited for it and talking about it like to my friends to curtis <laughs> etc and i just couldn't concentrate so we're going to rectify that now it is nearly 2 p.m and we'll see how much i can get read in the next three hours i'm really enjoying this i just could not focus to save my life last night Last night with 30 minutes to spare of the month, I did finish War by Laura Thalassa and I actually really enjoyed this one. It had an angst level that I feel like Pestilence didn't have and in terms of Horseman, I 100% prefer War. I do feel like this one is a little bit too long and as we got to the middle, we did get to a point where I had the same kind of gripe as I did with Pestilence where the Horseman is just doing too much and killing too many people and making the main characters be a part of it in a way that realistically would result in trauma that isn't so easy to overlook and then obviously because it's a romance it does turn into a happily ever after that being said you do kind of have to not necessarily overlook that but you have to go into this series knowing that they're horsemen of the apocalypse so they're going to be doing that kind of stuff and i do feel like in terms of war versus pestilence 
the turnaround of the main character, the main character coming to terms with the horseman and it going in the more like romantic direction, I feel was done a little bit better than Pestilence was. This book did contain one of my least favourite tropes. I felt that I didn't mind it too much, but it was also kind of disappointing that it was included. I don't want to tell you what it is because, um, spoilers, I will say that it's not one that I would consider a trigger warning, so you're okay on that front. It's just something that I personally don't really enjoy. But War himself, 10,000 times better than Pestilence in terms of, like, attractiveness level for a love interest. So, he obviously has the vibes of Jon Snow meets Khal Drogo and behavior wise he is definitely a Khal Drogo type character. Really just got behind his attitude and his personality because Pestilence is not the best throughout the entirety of his book really but especially at the beginning whereas War is always like kind respectful and gentle towards the main character even if he is like sacking cities elsewhere and I really liked how he couldn't quite process why the main character had her reservations about him when he was as sweet as pie to her and he was kind of like not understanding why she couldn't get behind the fact that he was like destroying and sacking cities as he travels across the world. It did just skew a little bit on the long side. I mean this is a 485 page book and in terms of the conflict he did keep rocking backwards and forwards between the main character and War where she is telling him that she can't get behind the fact that he's killing all of these people. She tries to save people. He goes against her and then kills more people because she tried to save people and they were at the stalemate for a long time where they just kept rocking backwards and forwards like between the two stances. So I feel like it could have been trimmed down a little bit but overall I did really enjoy this. It just scraped a four star like it's literally on the cusp between a high three and a low four but I think more than anything I just really enjoyed this one. It gets really angsty throughout the middle like as we're coming to the end and there were quite a few plot twists in here that I didn't see come in. I feel like I'm always astounded at the length that the horsemen go to in pursuit of the mission like it doesn't hold back when it comes to the fact that these horsemen are bringing about the apocalypse like they're literally killing people that is their purpose and it does get quite gruesome in parts and I really enjoy that in terms of the shock factor <laughs> when it plays into the fact that the human women are directly opposed to what it is that the horsemen are doing. Once again still participating in clear your shit so I'll show you guys the graphic where we're up to with that. If you're watching this the day that it's posted just a quick reminder that the final candle restock of 2022 is going to be happening tomorrow. I'm going to stay open after that for about a week. I don't think I'll sell out immediately. As usual with these things, I can't really tell. So go ahead and check that out if you would like to, if you need gifts or anybody, or like if you just need to restock, can like make sure you have a stock of candles because like I said, I'm not gonna be open in terms of candles until early February. So next week I am going to be moving on to the next installment of Is the Goldsboro Science Fiction and Fantasy Fellowship worth my money and reading these three very chunky books. So wish me luck. I'm hoping for some reading mojo. I will say actually during sprints yesterday, I've forgotten how much I read when I'm sat at my desk and that might be a new normal for me when I'm doing sprints. And I think it like goes back to the days of when I had a full-time job, but I actually used to read a lot while I was at work with an ebook open on my desktop. So yeah, I had a really productive reading session yesterday and I think I'm going to do some more death sprints in the future. But if you guys are interested in my thoughts on Ordinary Monsters, The Final Strife, or Lost in Time, then be sure to stay tuned and check out the next installment of my Goldsboro vlog series. But this is a super long vlog and I have to say it's not warranted, like there's not actually any need for this vlog to be over an hour. But I do hope you guys have enjoyed it if you've made it this far. If you have, please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you're a go when nobody knows With guns sitting under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no